Hi guys, Rap Critic here. And since Eminem just dropped a new surprise album in the lead single, and since I was born in February, my gift to myself is my own laziness by reviewing the music of an artist I'm already familiar with. So this month is gonna be the month of Eminem. Yeah, during Black History Month. I, look, it was a surprise album and I just happened to have two Eminem Patreon requests I wanted to get to, okay? Besides, I'm tired of taking a whole bunch of time to read Martin Luther King quotes that people who don't really give a shit about his deeper goals of equality are gonna take out of context for their own selfish means so that nothing in this country fundamentally changes. This month, I'm just gonna exist as a black person and enjoy my life. That's basically what MLK wanted, right? So I'm just gonna kick back, relax, and enjoy the new lead single from this Eminem album. Which, like all of his lead singles, is sure to be a fun, silly takedown of a bunch of celebrities or something like that, right? So, to start the video, I'm gonna go get some popcorn and get situated and just turn my brain off and have a good time. Alright, <laughs> let's get started. Uh, oh. Uh, okay. So, uh, I guess it's gonna be another song about the emotional turmoil Eminem's personally going through as a famous person, eh? But, okay, he, he can still make it work. Besides, I'm at least digging the way he's flipping that Simon and Garfunkel song, Sounds of Silence, which was originally a cryptic song about loneliness and isolation in a world where people have lost the ability to truly communicate with each other. A song about how we're not paying attention to the struggles each one of us is facing. Uh, so the author's forced to speak to nothingness, his loneliness personified by a metaphorical darkness that's become more of a listening ear than the actual people in his life. So I appreciate the somber way the sample's being used, uh, deepening the texture of Eminem's words by punctuating the lyrics every couple of bars. I'm so much like my father you would think that i knew him i keep pacing this room value and chase it with booze but i can't shake the feeling i've kind of heard this before you know like the somber tone the lyrics about how he's afraid this might be one of the last fleeting moments in his career i should get ready for the show now wait is this the whole crowd i thought the shit was sold out i'm not gonna lie this narrative starting to sound a little over dramatic at this point like, come on, man, how many times can you make the same song about? If I pop any caps, it better be off of vodka. Round after round after round, I'm getting loaded. That's a lot of shots, huh? Uh, you, you ever get the feeling something's gonna undermine your flippant disregard of the situation you're in? Leaning out the window, going Kaiser Sosa. Oh, uh, he, he's talking about a mass shooter, specifically the one in Vegas. Feels like I'm loathing in Las Vegas, haven't got the Vegas, why I'm so lost. And this is the part where everyone leaves because it gets political. Uh, well, before you axe out the tab, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Uh, they're already gone, aren't they? Well, uh, for what it's worth, I think it's masterful how he's using his skills at writing double entendres to call your attention to the double meaning that alludes to both Eminem's life and the life of the Vegas shooter. Fall off the bed, hit the ground, and crawl to the dresser. Alcohol on my breath as I reach for the scope. It was this lyric in particular when I was listening to it for the first time that made me think, oh, he's not just doing this gun wordplay to sound cool, is he? And I feel like he threads the needle of that dichotomy perfectly, illustrating the self-destructive lack of control within both of them, uh, diverging right at the point of the word scope, uh, being used here to illustrate the killer's descent into his awful machinations, while also illustrating Eminem's cover-up of his own vices, which in this case means masking the smell of his breath with mouthwash after depressive bouts of binge drinking. So the woe is me narrative we know him for at this stage of his career is being purposefully used to misdirect your expectations by commenting on the echoing duality of life experiences M and the Vegas shooter may have had through the double entendres, highlighting how the mental stress that comes from a fucked up life could just as easily lead to Eminem's life as it could have to the shooter's life. But if you'd like to know the reason why I did this, you'll never find a motive, no signs of mental illness, but I'm a licensed owner with no prior convictions, so lost the sky's the limit. And at this point in the song, he shuts down all the typical scapegoats people give when tragedies like this occur. Because as records show, the Vegas shooter wasn't a former criminal, nor was he mentally unstable. And besides, committing a mass shooting isn't some closed off option your brain can only unlock if you rack up enough mental illness points. You just need to be an asshole who is already living in a system that inherently isolates us from each other, doesn't value human life, and on top of that gives us access to a mountain of death weapons that can take those lives away with little effort. You know, it's, it's not a good combo. And M specifically brings up the fact that dude had access to the type of artillery that should only be available to someone fighting a goddamn war. So my supplies infinite, strapped like I'm a soldier. And yeah, that shooter was strapped like a soldier. So, you know, why was he allowed to be? Like, yeah, the Constitution allows for arms under the Second Amendment and whatnot, but it specifically has the caveat of it being a well-regulated militia. And from the montage of news clips about mass shootings that happens at the end, it's pretty clear things aren't very well regulated right now. So overall, I'd give this my break the scale 6 out of 5 rating. 
I really like that Eminem is using his platform to address a topic like this, uh, with a song that massively illustrates a dark reality of our modern world. Humanizing the murderer in a way by profiling himself, another supremely fucked up person who maybe sees how he could have gone down the same path if his thoughts and destructive tendencies got the best of him. However, he doesn't excuse the awfulness of the shooter's actions, instead illustrating a grander narrative of how we failed as a society if horrors of this scale are allowed to continue. And you know, there may be some who scoff at the idea of an artist making such nakedly political music like this, but I personally feel like it's paramount to making us truly pay attention to the issues of our society, immortalizing human tragedy in ways that the average person has no choice but to remember and truly reflect on the stark reality of the world we're living in. And hey, maybe it's an indication of Eminem maturing as an artist, especially from his early days of using insensitive references to mass murder tragedies for the sake of cheap shock value. But I'm contemplating yelling bombs away on the game like I'm outside of an Ariana Grande concert waiting. All right, should have seen that coming. But hey, that's the episode. Leave a like if you like, because it helps. Comment if you have something to say, because it helps even more. And hit the subscribe button and the bell, because it helps the most. Oh, and if you like my stuff and want to request a song for me to review, go to ko-fi.com slash rap critic for a one-time donation of $60. Or patreon.com slash rap critic, where for $1 you can see episodes early and talk with me and fellow fans on my Patreon Discord. I'll leave all the links to that stuff, plus my podcasts and all my social medias in the link tree in the description. So check all that fun stuff out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.